you very quickly about myself. I am obviously not Welsh. I'm Australian. Uh, I've been here for about six months working with National Theatre Wales and my background is in uh, social and community art, so cultural community development, we call it in Australia, which apparently doesn't really translate here. Um, so it's really about how art benefits society and community. So that's basically my approach to funding, is looking at the different ways we can present our work to perhaps funders that don't necessarily fund art. Okay, I'll get more into that in a minute. Um, so I'll just kick off, as I said, please jump in at any time. I just wanted to show, you, um, share with you this to start with because I really hate it. It really annoys me. This was going around on social media quite a bit recently. A lot of my friends were, um, sorry, can you see if I'm here? Okay. Not quite. I can go here. Cool. Um, a lot of my friends were sharing it when they were all applying for the same uh, fund recently and it was making me really angry. Uh, if you're ever writing a proposal and you feel like you're writing fiction, then you have to stop because the funder will definitely know as well. So obviously what I mean by that is if you're claiming it's going to save the world, but really it's just for your artistic development, then you really have to be honest and say that. So I just like to start with that because this is not who I am. So just quickly, um, I just want to be clear. What I'm going to talk about mainly today is ways to approach arts councils, trusts and foundations and community funds like your local council uh, and big lottery fund and that sort of thing. I'm not so much going to cover the things on the right here, uh, but obviously at the end of today we can do one-on-ones if you're particularly interested in that sort of thing. I know a lot of people have questions about crowdfunding lately. It's not my area of, spe of specialisation, but we can definitely have a conversation about it later. But sorry if you came along for any of those in particular. Does this particularly disappoint anyone? Great, that's good. Okay, so I like to look at things uh, in this sort of way. So a lot of the time we're looking obviously at funding for arts is going down. Uh, arts councils, she told me she had to leave. She doesn't hate me. She's coming back. Yeah, she wasn't here for crowdfunding. It's okay. Um, you know, it's really easy for us to get angry at the Arts Council and say, oh my gosh, why don't you just fund me to be a full-time artist at, at £50,000 a year? We could easily do that, but it's not going to get us anywhere. So we do just need to look at things differently. Okay. So basically what I mean by that is looking at the benefit of your project. Now, the way the Arts Council phrases that is, what is your project's benefit to your artistic career, to the wider arts sector or to the public? Okay. So if it is just your artistic career, that's fine as well because there's obviously the Arts Council and there are some trusts and foundations that fund that. You know, It is important to them that your artistic career is developed. So that is still a benefit. Uh, you don't have to always be saving the world. But um, that's basically where I come from. So I was saying at the beginning, you know, it's about working out what your project has to offer and approaching different funders because of that reason. Does that make sense, sort of? So obviously first you need, I say, have a conversation with your project and you basically need to talk to your project as if uh, you don't know anything about the arts. So you need to be asking questions that someone who has no idea how the arts can benefit society would ask questions. So, you know, we all know that, that doing a, a project with young people, we all know the benefits of, of the arts to young people but a lot of people don't know that inherently. So you have to say, well, why, why is a, a drama workshop with young people great? Say, so, well, you know, increases confidence and gets them doing something other than damaging behaviours and that sort of thing. Well, why, why drama then? You just need to keep asking away until you really understand what your project is and why it's unique to someone else's and what benefit your project has compared to someone else's. That makes sense? Awesome. Okay, so then it's obviously about looking uh, at what funder is right for you. Uh, so obviously there's Arts Councils, that's pretty straightforward. Arts Council Wales and there's British Council and that sort of thing. Does everyone know what I mean by trusts and foundations? Is that pretty clear? I think a few people not as well. Great. So that's um, basically private money. So uh, there's some really big ones. There's a Paul Hamlin Foundation and Esme Fairbairn Foundation. And they're basically um, 
you know, it's hard to describe other than, you know, rich, dead rich people um, <laughs> left their money to a foundation, to their family. Uh, a lot of the time it is someone's family set it up in, in you know, their grandparents' honour uh, with all that money rather than spending it for themselves. It's set up so that they can actually do something that that person cared about, which is how we get quite a lot of funds that do support the arts, which is really good. Uh, and often it's, you know, lots of little ones as well that just support community work. Uh, a lot of them particularly like environmental work. There's a lot of really specific trusts and foundations. There's a couple of really great databases online that I can talk to you about and share with you the address afterwards as well, where you can basically plug in your idea, do all the keywords. You know, it's an arts project that looks at the environment and young people and it will come up with every trust and foundation that covers those things. So then you can basically just pick those, look at each one. Out of probably 100 trust and foundations, you might only find five that your project actually fits into, but it's still a really worthwhile exercise, even though it takes some time. Some of those websites do, you do need a membership to even to get full access, but it's definitely worth it. And I have heard of people doing it in sort of collectives um, there was talk at the last presentation I did of a sort of North Wales Arts Collective where you can all kind of pay a little bit and, and get that happening. We haven't heard of that happening yet, but we'd be happy to be involved and help that to happen so that you don't all have to shell out all that money. It would seem a bit silly. Uh, and then there's obviously community and council grants which run very similar to trusts and foundations. It's the same sort of ethos, but obviously if it's your local council, then it is you know, if it's the local council that looks after Bangor, then it is particularly looking at work that's happening here and benefiting people here. So that's where you can find work that's... You can find funds if you're doing something in a specific location quite easily. If you're definitely benefiting people from there or if there's not much, not much arts activity in your local area, you can often find money there because it's about making the area more vibrant, engaging people, that sort of thing. And then other community grants is there's the big lottery fund. Uh, if anyone doesn't know of that, I'd really encourage you to, to write it down and, and look at it. They've got lots of different stages of funding. So there's some really small ones, kind of up to 5,000. Uh, and then it gets bigger and bigger. We're looking at one at the moment for kind of 400,000. So there's a really, really big range. And, uh, and a lot of the time it is just for people doing stuff in their local community and they do really like innovative arts projects. We found out recently, you know, same as all funders, but they do like something kind of cool to put their name to. And especially if you're doing an interesting arts project in your community, they can come along, have great photos, and it really helps them as well. So I really suggest everyone has a look at that. So obviously each fund does have pros and cons. Uh, and they don't always fit what you're going to do, but we can talk about that a bit later as well. So this is kind of pretty obvious, but I definitely say don't try and fit your project into a box it doesn't fit into, kind of going back to that cartoon at the start. So if you're doing a, an arts project that slightly mentions the environment, uh, but its purpose isn't really to educate or work with people about the environment, it's really unlikely you're going to get funding for an environmental trust or foundation. Uh, so you really, there's no point having an idea of what your project's going to be and then basically just lying about it or manipulating it in order to get money. Because then, yeah, you'll have money, but then you have to do all this stuff that you don't want to do. Um, and we really, I think as artists, we can get a bit sidetracked by money sometimes. We go, oh my gosh, there's all this funding. I really, really want it. And then you get it, but you realise you've promised it all this stuff that isn't isn't what you wanted to do and it's not uh, you know it's not your ethos if you've said you're going to do something with young people but you're actually interested in working with older people then suddenly you've got all these outcomes so just definitely remember that and that's kind of the same about change or lie about your project to make it fit so definitely don't change it which is what I was just talking about or lie um, the main thing is they'll definitely know and you won't get the money but if you do somehow manage to get the money, then yeah, you're kind of in a bit of trouble there as well. And I generally say don't create a project in response to a call out. So you might find there's a trust, you know, that, that fits everything that you do, 
but you know, this round they're only focusing on arts and older people. So they go, oh wow, I really wanted to do that, that project with young people, but if I do one for older people this year, then next year maybe they'll give me some money for my young people project. If you've always wanted to work with older people, then that's okay, I suppose, but you do see a lot of, you kind of see these cycles, you can see when people have done that. There's a lot of work out there at the moment with arts and older people, and it is because there's been quite a lot of big funds say that that's their priority. And obviously I don't know any of the artists myself, so I'm not saying they've just made it up on the spot, but you can kind of tell when there's all this stuff happening that people are particularly responding to call outs. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, so obviously what I was talking about having the, um, the conversation with your project, it, it really is about just thinking about your project in a different way. And that's what I kind of want to have a conversation with you guys about is, is how to look at your work and, and find the benefit. As I said, if the benefit is just artistic development for yourself, then that's fine. That's a benefit too. But how do you really find what it is. So we've got to do lots of thinking and then a lot more thinking. We've got to identify the fund that's right for you and then it's time to do your application. But I've kind of whizzed through that, which is probably good because last time I did this I went an hour and a half over. <laughs> so I was really cautious. I knew I'd get in trouble if I didn't do if I did that. So we can just have a bit of a chat now I suppose. In particular, does anyone have kind of questions about that? As I said, I'm really quick. So let's, we can just delve a bit deeper if you want. Any particular questions? Does anyone want to tell me? Yeah. Uh, trust and, um, second, uh, trust and, what was it? Trust and foundation. Foundation, yeah. yeah. How, how on earth have you got to identify which trust and foundation is uh, relevant to what you're trying to do? Yeah, so a lot of the time that is on these databases I was talking about. Some of them you don't have to pay for. I will write down on my business card what they are. Don't let me forget. So you basically, you can just do general Google searches as well. Trust and Foundations, Arts, Wales, Environment. It really does work. Um, and yeah, you get all these databases. Twitter can be really good. Uh, you know, following this kind of, I think it's Trust, let me look into it. It's Trust and Foundation something, kind of search, and they'll often advertise when there's a new call out and there's some new funds available. Uh, and I, and often, a really good thing to do is look at other people that have been funded. So obviously, your local art centre is going to have someone, maybe like me, whose job that is. So they're going to be really good at getting all the little bits of funding. So I do that all the time. I look at all the big, pretty much, art centres in the UK. Have a look at everyone they've been funded by, and you'll definitely find. That one is good, and I don't think you need a membership for that one. I think that's a good one. But there is. I just need to remember it. It's saved in my thing. Um, so I was just saying, yeah, so you just definitely look at other people that have been funded. That's a really good way, and then just pretty much search every name of that and get on their website. Um, and from that, you'd be able to tell if it's relevant to you or not. I probably spend, you know, out of every 50 that I search, I might find five that are relevant to us, but it's you know, better than nothing. Yeah. Have you, has anyone had experience with any trusts or foundations? No? I find it's a bit of an untapped source you have. Uh, the two just. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, they are a good one. What did you do? Oh, we have an arts project in a disadvantaged area in Carnarvon, so they funded us for three years. Oh, fantastic. That's really great. And did you do the application? No, it was uh, uh, the coordinator who was there before. Was there. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, they are a good one, actually. Um, what else? Anyone else want to wanna share with me your, your project? Does anyone have anything they're particularly looking for funding for at the moment? Share. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, is that a bit too specific? <laughs> okay. Okay. So we can, let's just talk, unless there's any, Simon, if there's any questions from the chat, just let me know. They're just interested in knowing what that website is. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Oh, God. Sorry. I really should write it down. Yeah. 
Sorry. Funding Central? Yeah, Funding Central. It's the best one. FundingCentral.org.uk. Yeah. It on the live chat now. It's a really good one. Okay. So now we can talk about a good application. Now obviously this is in my experience, uh, everyone is different and everyone likes to do things in a different way. So you might come away from today and say that's just not right for me and that's absolutely fine. I do tend to work in a very specific way, as I said I'm from this kind of social and community art background and also an academic background so I do tend to write in quite an academic way which can work for some people, but definitely take away a couple of the tips from today, even if you just take one, one part of it away. I think we can always, even myself, we can always get better at doing this. The main thing um, you've got to do when you're doing an application, which I've forgotten to do a slide about, but is obviously look at your funders' priorities. You know, it's, it's such a big job often, especially if you're doing an Arts Council application. It's so huge, you don't actually want to sit down and read their 20-page strategic plan, but you kind of have to, right? If you, if you want to make your application as competitive as, as you can, you have to read their strategic plan, because you can really pull out from that what they're going to be focusing on. So definitely, if you're looking at, at funding for the next three years, They've got a plan for what they need to achieve in the next three years to report to the government. So you can basically look at that and then make sure you talk about that in your project. There's definitely that fine line, as I said, you don't want to just pull that out and then make up that your project's going to do that. But you'll be reading it going, yeah, well, my project's going to help contribute to a vibrant community in Wales. My project's going to help keep young people busy and not engaging in dangerous behaviours. So you won't have even really perhaps thought that your project does that, but when you're reading someone's plan, you can definitely say, well, yeah, my project does do that, and then make sure you address it in your application. Uh, even if it's not a 20-page strategic plan, if you're lucky if it's a trust and foundation that just has a paragraph on their website about what they fund, make sure you really pull that out. Use some of their language in your application. Okay, it's really important. It can seem as a bit of a cheat, but it's definitely not. Okay, if they say, yeah, we're interested in creating more vibrant and active communities in Wales, then you can really put that in and say, my project will create a vibrant and active community in my community by, and then say how. You know, they're looking at hundreds and some arts council, thousands and thousands of these applications. If they can see really clearly that you're going to address their priorities, it's really, really helpful. Okay, it's really important. As I said, it's not sneaky to totally just copy their language in parts as well. It's really great. Okay, so a good application apart from that, obviously has a good budget, has great support material, a great review process and a great proposal. Some of this stuff might seem kind of obvious. I hate doing presentations saying make sure you do a spell check because everyone knows that, but make sure you do a spell check. It's really important. Um, so if any of this seems really obvious, Forgive me, but I even find it's good just to go over this stuff sometimes. So, obviously, a good budget balances. Now, a lot of people, when you're first starting out, say sorry once again if this is a bit basic for you guys in this room, but it can be easy to forget this. If you do need to submit a full-on budget to a trust or foundation, uh, often the Arts Council will have a template you've got to fill in, so it's easy not to forget anything. But if they simply say a one-page spreadsheet overview of your budget, you do need to make sure it balances. So obviously, that's income and expenditure. And it's so easy to go, well, I know where all my, exp where all my expenditure is going, but what about income? And often, it will just look like that one line. So if you're applying to the big lottery fund for £5,000, it's so easy to make it, well, that's my only income line. But if your project is costing £10,000, then you have to add up your income somehow. Uh, and a really obvious way to do that is obviously in kind with your time. So, um, you know, perhaps you're going to pay yourself out of uh, the, the income, the funding, which you always should be, obviously. Sustainable <laughs> artists, that's what we're all about. You have to be paid. But there will obviously be time that you're not going to be paid for. Obviously, writing this application, all right? 
So a really, really quick way to up your income a little bit is to obviously show your time as in kind. Uh, if your brother's going to be doing any of the marketing work for you, etc., pop that in. It's an income line. You know, you don't want to lie about it and say, yeah, my friend's going to be doing all this. It's pretty much £2,000. But, um, you know, think about it realistically. You and possibly a lot of people you know and artists involved in your project, unfortunately, will at some point probably be doing something unpaid. So remember that that really is income. Does that make sense? Awesome. Uh, and then obviously other income lines, you do need to uh, you do need to show whatever fund you're applying for. So big lottery fund, five thousand pounds. If that's who you're applying for, just pop it down there. You don't need to say to be confirmed because they're the ones reading it. They know that it's not obviously confirmed. But pop it down there, and it does really show that you're you're confident as well. Then if you do have any, you know, if you are looking at other funds, so perhaps you've already put an application to a smaller trust or to the Arts Council, obviously an income line, and that does need it to be confirmed on it. And that should be exactly for how much you've applied for. And if you're hoping to make another application to, say, a trust or, or an Arts Council or something like that, but you don't know yet, you don't know exactly which trust it's going to be, then you can basically just have the balance and say, Additional, additional trusts and foundations to be confirmed. It is good to put perhaps a list of ones you're looking at. Uh, potential funders may be, just in really small writing, so they can just show that you're not just saying, I have no idea. So just pop down a couple of ideas. And obviously, if you're doing a couple of applications to trusts at once, you're going to just have to change that. You know, you'll have to be confirmed, switching out with the one you're actually applying to. And that can be really easy to do. And it can be a really easy way just to get it to balance. Does that make sense? Questions? No? Awesome. Uh, okay, so as I was saying, so depicts multiple income sources, obvious. Uh, can show a correlating expense and ask line. Now this is either for when you're doing a really a quite a big project, quite a big application, or if you're just applying to a say a small community grant that only gives out £500 at a time, you might want to actually show exactly where that's going to go. So for example, if you're doing a $10,000 project, you're applying to a fund only for 500 sometimes they can feel that well, their money's going to go nowhere. They don't really understand what their money is going to do. And obviously a lot of these charities don't have a lot of money themselves, so they don't want to feel that they're spending their money and not getting really getting you know, benefit for that. So what you can actually show is an expense line that adds up to £500, for example. You know, and you can make it sound really exciting and it's simply on a line on a spreadsheet. Transport for disadvantaged youth to come to the workshop for free. And that's going to be £500. You don't need to actually highlight that and then highlight the ask and make it really obvious that that's what it's going to go to. You can if you want. I've never really found the need because they'll sort of work it out because they'll ask themselves, well, what's £500 going to do in this big project? And then they'll go, oh, look at that. And that's a nice thing to contribute to. Okay? I don't always do it. Generally, I just do it when the ask is for quite a small percentage of the overall cost. Or if they specifically say they don't fund staff, they won't fund you know, artist fees or something like that, then you might want to really make sure that it's obvious that their money won't be going towards that. Okay? Uh, and obviously, it's not too detailed, but it's generated from a detailed working budget. So, I'm sure you're all quite used to doing budgets for your work, or perhaps you're not. Um, but, you know, if you're, you're submitting an application, you obviously need to know how much money you need. And it definitely makes your application a lot stronger if they can tell that you're not just saying, oh, 10,000, why not? I'll see what I can do with it. You know, if you have a specific ask, say the max you can get is 10,000, you're applying for seven and a half. It'll really show them that you know exactly why you need that money. So I usually do a really detailed budget, really, really boring spreadsheet, okay? All the artist fees, all the allowances, uh, all your expenses, high fees, everything. And then just take out the kind of the headers. So artist fees equals, uh, equipment equals, etc., And that's on the budget that you submit. You don't need to give them one that shows all that information. 
usually you just need kind of an overview and they may ask for further information and that's when you've got it to give them. If you have just made that stuff up, guessed, I guess it'll be about £500 to hire the space, then you're going to be in a bit of trouble if they do want further information. Make sense? Awesome. Budgets is not the most exciting thing to talk about, is it? <laughs> Don't look that excited. <laughs> Okay. Um, I've got a question. Yeah. That's okay. Absolutely. Uh, it's about um, when you are saying to the funder exactly what their money is being spent on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, if you're working on a research and development project or something like this, and you don't really know what's going to come out of it, mm -hmm. if you've got any kind of thoughts or suggestions on you know, what how you might go about articulating some of that. Yeah, I definitely find. In those cases, honesty is the best policy. Um, but basically, it can look really attractive to a funder. So if you basically say, I'm, I'm looking for funds in order to spend two weeks working out what my project's going to be, then that can be really attractive, especially if they are an arts-focused funder. Then they're going to say, yeah, I want to give you time to work that out. And yes, you should be paid for that time. So. I think I had a really great example last time at this presentation, now I can't remember, but it was, you know, something along the lines of your funding will allow me to have the freedom to take the time to work out my project, to specifically explore these things. So it, you can still be specific even if you don't have much of an idea. I'm looking for time to spend time with a, you know, money to spend time with a, a movement director. I've never had that time before and this is why I need that. I'm not good at it and I need this in order to benefit my practice. So it is still specific even if you're kind of just going to be hanging out in a room for a week. Does that yeah. answer the question? Kind of like, I guess you know, the saying uh, that the money is going towards breaking boundaries for theatre mm -hmm. and we're working out how that's going to happen in a room. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. I don't really know what we're going to do, really but we're going to spend the money on yeah, hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Um, because we don't, we don't often have to justify that to ourselves. If we're you know, talking to each other in this room, if you said, I'm going to have two weeks of research and development and it's funded, no one in this room is going to say to you, oh my God, what does that mean? You're just going to be hanging out, eating crisps all day with your buddy who happens to be a movement director. No one in this room would say that because we all really understand the benefit of that time. So the really good thing to do kind of what I was saying before about having a conversation with your project, is saying, imagine if the person you're talking to doesn't understand what that is and doesn't understand the benefit, because then you go, oh, okay, well, what is a research and development period and how does it benefit anyone? It's obviously benefiting you, but perhaps it is eventually going to benefit society or the community as well. So if I have this time to spend time doing this, then I'll be able to do this, which eventually benefits me or other people. Okay, so if you really look deeply, you'll find that actually what you're doing is quite specific, even though you don't know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. Are there any others? No questions? Cool. So great support material. Pretty obvious it actually exists. Um, I know that sounds really silly, but I've had so many people, um, you know, do a, say do a showing of a piece of work. Uh, and then come away and go, wow, everyone loved it, I want to do it again, but we didn't film it. So I know this is really obvious, but you know, if you're doing something and you think you might want to take it further, you need to film it or document it, if it's visual art, whatever it is. Make sure you're documenting it in high quality. Um, obviously that's an expense most of us can't afford, especially if you're just doing a small showing of your work. But definitely think about it. If you get good footage, good photographic documentation, it's really going to help down the long run. I've got so many friends that always end up doing second showings, having to hire a theatre, pay all technicians, that sort of thing, just to get a video of it. And it's just such a waste of time and money. So just always think about that. I say it's not oversupplied. Nearly every funder you'll apply to will have a list of what they will and won't accept at that stage. More and more these days, if you're looking at a two-stage application, they don't want anything in the first stage. They really just want you to make your argument that they don't want 
to have to see all the video about it and all that sort of, you know, artist biographies at that stage. So just once again, make sure you read the guidelines really, really clearly. Um, they're going to get really annoyed at you if you do also send lots of stuff. So, and also if they do say send whatever, you have to imagine that they don't really mean that. They don't really want 20 clips of your work. Send one great clip that, that really shows who you are. And obviously, if you've got the skills slash funds slash friend to do it for free, um, then you can just get a really good kind of clip that shows everything, you know, a bit of all your work. If you can get a really good kind of two minute edit of whatever you can do, it's really, really valuable. As I said, not oversupplied. One thing, two videos, 10 photos, that sort of thing. Don't go crazy. Um, the video is not too long. So a lot of people do kind of think, oh, this is the whole show. They'll want to see the whole show. And I think we all understand that that is really hard, hard to watch, especially if you're just trying to see if it's right for, you know, if you're a fan and you say, I just want to see if this is right for me, you're not going to watch an hour. So you can definitely say in your application that you've got footage of the entire show. So I'm obviously from a theatre background, so I say show, but you know, obviously there are visual artists and lots of other people in the room. So let me know if that's getting really annoying. Um, you can definitely say, I've, I've got this and I can't supply it upon request. And especially if you're looking for a lot of money, then people might ask for that, but don't send it as the only option or don't kind of phrase it as, here's a clip of my work, and then they press play and realise it's an hour and 20 minutes long. Just introduce it and say what it is, and they can choose to watch it or not. And you just need to link to further examples. So if you'd like to read my biography, it's available here on my website, and link to it. If you'd like to see an example of my collaborator's work, here it is. And then they can just click on it, especially if you're doing uh, electronic applications, which most stuff should be these days. I still post one the other day, not fun. Then you can obviously just link to it. Um, and you know, if you're doing a post one anyway, you can just obviously show the address or show how to find that. So that's a way to get around not oversupplying stuff. You just need to say this is where you can find it. And obviously it's easier if you're at that stage of your career where you've got a website. Um, and even if you don't, it might be something if it's a big application that you look at getting just for that. Simple WordPress site, put all your videos there, all your biographies. It is a really easy way to make you look really, really professional as well uh, and have lots of stuff going on in there. Is it, is it enough just to say, go to the line, like, go to the website of the company and say, well, it's all there? Or do yeah. you suggest that you actually supply some stuff as well in the first place? Because, you know, it's sure. It definitely depends on what they want. So if they've asked you to supply things and support material, mm -hmm. if they say, with your application, please demonstrate the quality of your work, then that means they want to watch a video. So however you're submitting it, if it's just a written application, you know, obviously if it's hard, it's possible to embed a little video into PDF but they're probably not expecting that. Obviously that link is fine. Yeah. Um, but if they've asked for something specific like that, please demonstrate the quality of your work, and you simply say, for further information, go to my website, then that's a bit annoying. Okay. Yeah, okay. so answer their question, but if it means that they need to go somewhere else to watch it, that's okay, but make it really obvious how they do that. Yeah, to see the quality of my work, go to. That, that tiny little shift, but it shows that you've read what they want. Cool? Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So a great review process, really, once again, this is kind of that obvious spell check thing. Uh, but you obviously need to read it multiple times <coughs> and then read it away from your computer. Things look really different on paper and you can always tell little formatting issues or spelling mistakes on paper. It's really important. Even if it's not great for the environment, I still do it. Uh, you need to ask your collaborator to read it, uh, ask a fellow artist, that sort of person. Uh, you need someone that does understand your work to make sure that you've gotten it across. It's so easy, you know it so well, so inherently. It's so easy for you to just forget to tell this really important part of it. Uh, especially telling the story of your work, getting someone to really understand what it's going to feel like when they're, when they're in it, when they're seeing it, that's something that can be quite hard for you to get across. 
So, um, so make sure you do get someone who understands your work to read it, if there is such a person. Uh, ask an experienced peer to read it as well, so that is someone perhaps, you know, a little more advanced in their career can be really great. Uh, once again, if they know your work well, it can be really good. And then obviously ask someone who knows nothing about your work to read it. It is really important, once again, for that same reason, you know your work so well that you just don't realise that you have completely missed something. So, you know, it's a great way to just make sure that, that you've gotten across everything you need to. So hopefully everyone has someone lovely in their lives like that who will do that for them. It's really, really important, especially if it's a big chunk of money. I know um, nearly all of these tips mean that you need kind of a day at the end of the process before the submission deadline to kind of do all this reviewing and that's really important. I know it's so easy for us all to just get right up to that deadline and be sending it off at 11.59, but it's really important that you try not to do that. Set yourself a deadline of at least a few days before so you can actually do this stuff, okay? Cool. Okay, so the important bit, a great proposal, it's kind of what everyone's come here for, I suppose. Is there any questions so far on what we've done? No? Great. What time, how much time have I got? Uh, it's 5-2. Okay, we're going to that call past? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so a great proposal obviously abides by the guidelines. As I said, pretty straightforward. Read the guidelines. And that is that really obvious thing if they ask for two pages of A4. Just do two pages of A4. And don't, it's so obvious, but don't make that nine point and really tiny margins. It's just going to annoy them. Uh, and it's basically, a, it's a test. If, if you can't talk about your work in two pages, then your work isn't ready for, for their fund. You know, it really is that. And I know it's easy to, to say, oh, but my work's really complicated. And I, st I still do that and I really struggle. But, um, but you've just got to stick to the guidelines. I've even seen some now that actually say, please don't make your font below 11 point and reduce the margins. Because obviously people are doing it all the time. So just be the smart one, be the cool one, have a nice 12 point if you can, lots of space, easy for them to read. Okay. It's always better to have a shorter one than a longer one. Okay, addresses their priorities, spoke about before. Um, sometimes, I'm going to go into it in a minute about how to do a general proposal. So when they do just say, write us two pages. There's no questions there, there's nothing, it can be really hard. So sometimes it's really good for you to um, have your own questions and you basically answer them a paragraph each, even if you've got the question written there and then you go back and delete it before submission. You can definitely find that that's a really good way to get it organised. I'll kind of, I'll show an example. Uh, but, you know, if they do have specific priorities, we want to achieve this, this and this, then make sure they're kind of three nice sections. Uh, so it doesn't try too hard, the argument is clear. And I think this is where it's quite easy for someone who's, you know, for you're the artist and you're writing this, for you to go, oh my god, I got these great reviews and the work was just so great, everyone loved it, and you just start writing about that. This person loved it and this person loved it, and you've got all your reviews written there, you start using all these great adjectives, oh my god. You know, it can get really, really frustrating to read. Um, I used to have someone I worked with all the time who did this kind of burlesque sort of thing and she'd always say, you know, sumptuous caravan of variety, indulgent and just so many words went on for two paragraphs. And it's like, well, I'm not really reading anymore. I've got this thing on the stream, maybe she's watching. No. <laughs> 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 oh my God. No. Um, yeah, so just don't try to hide. You've got to get them involved in your work and it really is good if you've got a great review or great audience feedback. One or two maximum. Uh, you know, you, you can just tell when you're trying too hard. Just, just stop telling me that your mum loved it as well. It's okay. Makes sense. A bit harsh, but yeah. Uh, so the argument is researched and demonstrated. That's what I'm going to show in a minute. So this is basically, this one little point four is kind of everything I do. So basically, you need to show that what you're doing is addressing a need. You might have come across this in Arts Council applications, where's the need for your project? And that's basically, yeah, why does, does the funder need to fund you? 
So if it's Arts Council, the need is your artistic development. No one in Wales is currently doing this work. Someone needs to be, and I'm doing it. Okay? Uh, or if you are looking at a social or community fund, young people in Wrexham currently don't have a place to go after school to learn you know, uh, digital work, and that's it, that's the need. But then you need to show that that's researched, okay? Especially if you're talking about more conceptual ideas. Not conceptual, but kind of <coughs> the bigger ideas. So, uh, you know, it's important for young people to have access to uh, time to experiment with media. Says who? Someone definitely says that somewhere at a university. There will be research for nearly everything you do. So you basically look up an academic paper. Hopefully, that even better, it's a, a Wales government paper. You know, there's a lot of this one out at the moment. Um, culture and poverty. It's talking about how culture contributes, you know, gets people out of poverty. Uh, there's a lot around education. So if you're working with young people at all, there's some really great papers out there that are talking about the, the benefits of creativity and education. So you just need to read all this stuff. You know, and if you're just saying, young people need access to, to dramatic work, then you can just footnote that. Straight away, you can justify your argument by someone who's actually done a lot of research in it. Anytime you say anything like that, it's really important to, to just back it up. You know, as I said, no one in this room is going to say, yeah, right, drama helps young people. We all understand that. But they don't, okay? So just back it up. Make sense? And obviously, it's well structured. So that's what I was talking about before. You need to make it really clear what you're talking about now. You can't kind of be jumping all over the place. Talk about your work, talk about the need, then talk about your work again. It can get really confusing. So I'm just going to kind of give an example. Okay. So I'll give an example of how to construct an open proposal. And then I'll just quickly explain what those Arts Council questions really mean. And then I think I'll be right on time. Can I go and read that? Yeah. Okay, so this is just a silly little thing I totally made up. It's a project called NTW Garden. It's about arts and growing food coming together. Um, but basically this is in that example where you've, you don't have any questions. They've just said, this, which is a lot of trust and foundations, tell us about your project in two, size, two pages of A4. Okay, this is how I would do it. You need to talk about how you, who you are. So obviously National Theatre is, National Theatre Wales is, and we create. Really short paragraph, you just need to talk about who you are, what your company is, okay? So your aim as an artist, okay? Then I've got a great quote there, all right? This is a good place for a quote. So our work has been described as, and obviously reference that. If you don't have one, that's fine, uh, you know, but it is a good place for one. Okay. So then I've said NTW Garden is a project that brings together gardeners and artists too. So this is where you talk about the work, okay? This is exactly what your art does. Uh, and this is where you can, you know, beautifully describe your project, all right? So this is the fun part. You actually just have to you get to talk about the art, not all the other stuff, all right? And make sure it's really clear. You need to make sure that the funder understands what's going to happen if they're coming to see it if it's for an outcome, if it's for R&D, they understand what you're going to be doing in that room. Uh, you know, if it is for, for visual art, they can understand what the person is going to be feeling when they're seeing it, okay? Make sense? And so then I've said, government research reveals that today's younger generations are becoming disconnected to the process of food production. So this is a, an introduction to the need for your work, okay? So if uh, NTW Garden was really going to exist, it would be addressing the need that, that people are, are disengaged from how food actually gets to our plates. So obviously I've got your footnote that, okay? Government research, you need to say what that is, right? It's really important. Just like in school when you're writing an essay, you can't just claim something and not back it up, all right? And as I said, that sort of stuff is really easy to find. Google it, Google Scholar, your new best friend, okay? Uh, and just just find someone that agrees with you. <laughs> Google Scholar. Does anyone know what Google Scholar is? Yeah, it's pretty much the Google for all academic papers. It's just like Google Maps, but Google Scholar. It's awesome. Okay. And then I've got information retention is doubled when learning and the arts are combined. 
So basically what I've got there, the paragraph before is specifically talking about the need. You don't really talk about your arts project there at all, it's saying there's a need for this. And then this is how your project addresses that, okay? In order for young people to understand where food comes from, my project will, all right? It's really important. It's two very similar but separate questions. Need and then how your project addresses it. And then, NTW Garden uses photography, illustration and dance to inspire, educate and connect through a series of five workshops that. So this paragraph is quite different to that third one that talks about what your project is. This is the real specifics. Five workshops, 30 people, three weeks, two artists. All right, we'll talk about that. Sometimes that can work better up the top as well near that third paragraph but often you need to make sure that they're, they're interested in reading the proposal before that, all right? They don't want to kind of know that you're going to be spending all these money on artists and workshops before the reader really understands why. Make sense? Okay. So then that's kind of as I was saying there. So through NTW Garden, we'll connect with 10 young people, 20 gardeners, achieve mutual understanding, etc. An investment of X from X will ensure just made a spelling mistake. Should have read this. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so that's what I was saying. We've got those real specifics. And then what will we achieve? Okay, we will achieve mutual understanding between gardeners and young people, etc. And your investment, so you can say an investment of this from your trust will ensure that 10 of those young people will be able to come to that workshop for free. Okay, that's if you're applying for something really specific or small, like I was talking about before. Or an investment of this from you will ensure that this project happens to the best possible ability and that we're able to run the full number of workshops rather than only a smaller number. Make sense? Awesome. Okay, and then obviously I've got to see our showreel, please click here. To view archive footage, examples of marketing materials and creative biographies, please visit our website. Okay, produce record. Do you want to spend any time on that? I've probably got a couple of minutes. Does that, as I said, it's quite a specific way of writing. It's what I do. Does that kind of seem totally scary or weird or alternatively exactly what you guys do? Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty fair. Yeah? Yeah. It's a good introduction. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good introduction. Okay. Some things just been this like big scary thing. I don't think about that. This is a really yeah. Balance, awesome. That's good to know. <laughs> I always feel this is just my particular corner of the world. I'm glad it's not just relevant to me. Awesome. Um, so what we can definitely do, perhaps at the end when we're doing one on ones this afternoon, is what I like to do is actually just talk about your work. Tell me about your work. And then I'll try and pick out those little things and we can actually talk about how you might start constructing something like this. So we'll do that a bit later, if you're interested. So just the very last bit, these are just standard questions that you'll often have to answer. So I just wanted to explain what they're really asking for. Uh, these are from an Arts Council application I pulled out, I think for artist development, but a lot of the time you'll find trusts and foundations want to ask what you talk about this. Um, if you, are, if you are lucky enough to be talking to someone in person, if you have been invited to a meeting with a community fund or, or a counsellor, they'll really want to know this stuff as well. So what's the aim of your project in 100 words or less? This happens quite often, it's happening more and more. A lot of the time it's really good to know that your answer to this, if you're successful, will actually be put on their website to talk about what you do. So if they want to advertise, and now we're funding National Theatre Wales, two, they'll just copy that, okay? So it needs to be really clear. But basically they also just want to be able to read in 100 words or less, what are you doing, okay? It is really, really hard. <laughs> Often, I think I've done one where it was 100 characters, which was ridiculous. But it's basically, you know, NTW Garden will bring young people and gardeners together in an arts project to help stimulate mutual understanding of food production. Something like that. Okay, really, really clear. Sometimes you don't have to go up to the 100 words or whatever they're asking for. It is good to stay under if you can. Describe your project. 
seems really easy. Um, and basically this is the easiest one, but it is really important that you make sure you're addressing their question. So if it is simply your project, they want to understand what is going to happen in that room, you know, at that exhibition. What is it that's really happening? So if it's an R&D, quite, quite obvious, we're there to explore things. If it is a showing or a tour, we are going to be doing a tour, okay? Often you'll have quite a lot of room in this to really start talking about the, the world of your work and put quotes in and that sort of thing. Sometimes it is quite short, but this is where you talk about the art, okay? What's the need for your project? Talked about that before. This is basically exactly where I I get that from when I'm doing an open proposal. You know that they want to know what the need is. And this really is it's about what's unique about your, your work. Um, where, why do we need this in our lives? Okay. And that's back to the beginning. It might be for your benefit, society, the community, whatever it is. It is for someone's benefit and that's what it is. So as I said, if it is artist development, which can often be the hardest one to talk about, it's just because I want to. That's not really the answer. If you really have a conversation with yourself, you know, well, it's because no one else is doing this. It's because I can't go anywhere and learn from an expert in Wales about this particular way of working. So I want to be that expert. Wales needs this. Makes sense? So artist development is often the hardest one and there's definitely not as many funds for it, so you have to make sure your argument's really strong. But yeah, if you really think and keep digging down, you'll find that the benefit isn't always just for you. All right. And how does your project address that need? So that's the combination of your project and the need. So there isn't an artist currently doing this. My work will fill that gap, it will do this, I will then be able to train other artists in this style of working, etc. Uh, if it is for a bit more of a community focus, say NTW Garden, uh, my project does that by bringing together these groups of people, bringing them into a safe space, giving them time to collaborate, work towards an outcome together, develops mutual understanding, develops respect, etc. Okay, so I know those questions seem really obvious, but it, I do often find when I'm writing an application that sometimes I'm always doing the same answer in all four. You're kind of just writing the same thing over and over in a slightly different way. But if you really think about the question and really try and make them all very quite, quite different, it'll be much stronger. 